Alright, so we are shooting with the 50 megapixel main sensor of the POCO C65. If you haven't seen the unboxing, check out our review video on Tekuya on YouTube. And in the meantime, wow, lakas ng background. But anyways, we are shooting with the camera using the built-in microphone. So please forgive the background noise. This is our camera test after all. But we received this clock. It's a meat temperature and humidity monitor digital clock from the Xiaomi Christmas party yesterday and I thought it would be a good opportunity to check it out and test the camera at the same time. So I've always wanted this because it's digital and it's super slim, slim which means we will be able to mount this anywhere in, in a, on your wall and you can also put it on top of your desk like on a flat surface so it's a very simple box I don't exactly know how much it's gonna cost but enough talking we're gonna open it right now and this unit that they gave away at least still has the text in Chinese so that might confuse some of you guys if you ever get this or if you ever see this and by the way there is there are perforations on the back of the box but I'm gonna try to open it without breaking the box because I kind of wanted to preserve the packaging but doesn't seem to let me so I guess we're gonna have to break it okay we're gonna do it the correct way or the proper way kita basa camera okay so one, two, three, go. We're gonna have to break this as well. Alright. So how is the 50 megapixel main sensor of the Poco 50 doing? Let me know in the comment section. Oh, it's really small. So cute. It actually reminds me of like a remote control. TV remote control. It's even smaller than a regular TV remote control or a air conditioning remote control, I would say. Yeah, no, okay. So what do you think of the image quality of the Poco C65? And the main features of this clock is printed on the side, so you have e-ink display you can display the time temperature humidity as well as bluetooth connection which means you don't get wi-fi okay i'm gonna have to research the price offline i'm gonna put it on the description box because i haven't really checked it out yet let's see if we can figure out how to enable the batteries without looking at the manual so there is a tab right here and you have a piece of plastic film which I guess is what separates it from from the batteries to keep it ah, from connecting but I can't seem to remove the back panel so we're gonna have to consult the manual Alright, that's not something that we normally do on this channel and the manual of course is in Chinese, it's not, it's not translated. Let's see if we can figure it out without doing a... Is there an English translation somewhere? No. Oh, there is. Okay, so there is... My bad, there is an English translation. And for us to remove the back panel, how exactly do we do that? Open the cover from the cover, opening of the clock, replace the batteries by 2 CR 2032. So that is the size of the battery 2032. But it doesn't exactly tell us how to remove the back panel and I'm scared 
I'm afraid of breaking it. Using the stand, remove the release liner from the stand. I'll align the guide and press firmly. Okay, this is for installation. Okay, so apparently it comes with a stand. Here it is. And you can either you can use it, okay, as a desk clock by mounting this onto the back panel like so. See that? But I prefer, actually, okay, I, I would prefer to mount this on the wall so I'm not gonna be installing it right now but <laughs> I really wanted to I just wanna there it is okay so we went ahead and forcefully snapped the back despite our fears of breaking it and as you can see we have two Sierra 2032 batteries on the back and we're gonna have to remove that There you go. There is the other battery. It's interesting because Wow, that e-ink display is so nice. It actually looks like it's printed wow very nice display but did you see when we took it out of the box it was showing something and then it disappeared when we and my the batteries just fell into my coffee guys okay <laughs> this is live and unscripted and this is going into the post so interesting so apparently this is how e-ink works when you take out the batteries it stays on so what we we're seeing what we were seeing earlier was actually e-ink and it was already turned on so <laughs> We made a mess right here, which means we're gonna end this video. Okay, we're, we're just gonna pause this video because I wanna actually demonstrate the features on this phone. So let me just clean this up because I made a mess and the battery is soaked in our coffee. Jeez. Let's stop doing that. All right, I'm gonna pause this video. All right, we're back. And we've cleaned the batteries, okay. I just wanted to show you guys how this works. So. No batteries. And we're gonna insert one battery. Oh, it actually turned on with just one battery. It blinked. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again. Okay. And and I'm gonna show you what happens from, from the front. See? And I'm gonna put in the second battery. So now we have two batteries. So does this mean that it can operate with just one battery? Very interesting. 
and the second battery might just be for redundancy and we're gonna snap the back panel back on mm -hmm. let's see how good the Poco C65 budget smartphone priced at 5,000 Philippine pesos. Okay, see how good the camera can be. Okay, now we have both batteries running. So how do you operate this? You're gonna have to pair this with your phone and of course I'm using the Poco C65 which means we're gonna have to we're gonna have to use a different phone okay and we're gonna scan where is that we're gonna have to scan the QR code So this, I'm, I'm guessing this should also work with the Xiaomi app and scanning the QR code didn't work so I'm gonna open the Mi Home app okay and then we're just gonna we're gonna try to scan first No, let's try the add device option first. See if it can detect. Does it detect? Our device, no, it doesn't work. Okay, we're just gonna have to scan it manually. Okay, I can't do this with the camera to my back so we're just gonna have to do it right here and it's not working hmm it's not scanning might have something to do with the camera or the print is too small do we have a bigger QR code somewhere mm, no we don't have a bigger QR code so I'm just gonna upload it from the photo that we took where's the photo okay we didn't take a photo so we're gonna we're gonna take a photo of the QR code and we're gonna upload that photo. We're gonna take a close up photo. And as I'm taking a photo, the QR code is actually getting triggered. See? Oh, okay, now it got triggered. But it still didn't find the device. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload that photo. Couldn't scan code. Oh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna add the device manually. Because we're we're having we're running into some trouble scanning the QR code. Let me try just one last time. I'm gonna try to scan the QR that's on the manual instead. So bigger you know, it's a bigger print.
Okay, couldn't scan code. I already scanned like the big print and it still says that it couldn't scan the code. So I'm guessing this might be for China only. There are certain Xiaomi devices that only work if you specify China as your default re region. So I'm this is what I what I get. Current scan code. Okay. It doesn't recognize that QR code. And it's suggesting that we add it manually. Okay. Um, where is that? Okay, I'm a little bummed right now. It shouldn't have to be this difficult. So we're going to add it manually. Still nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. No device found. Okay. Last resort would be to log out of our, you know, this is what I did. I manually tapped on the Xiaomi uh, temperature humidity clock, but still it is unable to detect our device. So I'm really guessing that this is the China variant, which means we're going to have to log out and we're going to have to switch our region because currently our region is set to Philippines. See that? Let me see if we can switch to China without help. Okay, without logging off, server doesn't match. When I tried to switch to China, see right here, Chinese mainland, and it means that we're gonna have to sign in to a different account. I hope this works. Okay, so do we have to create a new account? And I don't know my password. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure this thing out. I might have to pause the recording here if it takes too long. Let me try one more. Okay. Did I get did I get signed in? Okay, I finally signed in to my Chinese mainland Xiaomi or Mi Home account and we're gonna have to do that again and boom just as su suspected 
it auto detected. I didn't do anything. I didn't scan any QR code. I just tap on this plus button. And add device. Okay, I'm gonna do it right like this. See? Okay, so let's see what happens when we add device. done pairing so we're gonna set a name what's a good name clock let's put clock uh, what's the name of the clock in Loki Miss Minutes. Let's name this guy Miss Minutes. And there is... Uh, okay. So now we're at the main control panel for Miss Minutes, which is what we decided to name our clock temperature humidity sensor bluetooth gateway okay so you can also connect to a bluetooth gateway but as you can see we have a real-time report of the temperature as well as the humidity and it is very humid where we are at 70 plus percent humidity And here are the settings for the app, or rather for the device. We're gonna switch to Fahrenheit. No, we'll leave it as is. And that's basically it. So you can create automations. Let's see what kind of controls or what kind of triggers we can use. So you can create automations based on certain triggers such as the temperature and the humidity and the time. See? And there is a PM 2.5 option. Not exactly sure if this device can detect the PM 2.5. From what I know, you need like a you're gonna need like a different sensor for that but it would be interesting if we do have a way to monitor the PM 2.5 but that's basically it guys so only thing that I'm really bummed about is that you're gonna need to switch to China Chinese mainland region for you to use this device I wouldn't know if there if Xiaomi is planning to add this or in to, to add support for this in the Philippine region or in other regions or the English you know global regions or if that's gonna require like a different device altogether with a different hardware or there might be some regulatory regulatory restrictions that prevent us to do that or prevent them from doing that so I'm gonna reach out directly to Xiaomi and hopefully we'll get some answers 
because even if you want to be able to create some automations let's say if the humidity drops to a certain threshold you're gonna increase the temperature of your fan or you're gonna increase the um, the 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 velocity of your fan you won't be able to do that if you have a global fan because that's going to be connected to a different account and I know this for a fact because in Google Assistant at least you can only connect one account one Xiaomi account to your Google Assistant it wouldn't be a problem if you could connect two different Xiaomi accounts which means you will have both your global or your Philippine Xiaomi account as well as your Chinese mainland Xiaomi account working together but the option to add a Mi Home account disappears once you've already added a single account so yeah mm. thanks Xiaomi I guess and if you have any questions about the Poco C65 we do have more content planned for this phone right here we're also going to be doing a gaming test so watch out for that subscribe to us on Tekui on YouTube if this is the kind of content that you like to see so in the meantime this has been great then I'll see you guys in the next video bye